It takes some people years to become a data analyst. I'm going to share with you my top habits that can reduce that to months and in some cases even weeks. Hey friends, Ian here. I've been teaching people how to become a data analyst for years on LinkedIn through coaching calls, through my posts, through webinars, newsletter, and even guest speaking at Ivy League schools. And some of these people have landed interviews within the first week of me teaching them these habits. And some, it took a little longer. Everyone's journey is a little bit different. And make sure to stick around to the end because my last habit I share with you is what I can attribute to landing my previous two data positions. Number one, learning. And what I mean by learning as a habit is being consistent about it. Now, whether that be 15 minutes a day or block out a chunk of time for four hours on a Saturday and Sunday, whatever works best for you. And if you can't find any time, think again. You're going to need to make small sacrifices, whether it be waking up a little bit early, studying on lunch, staying up a little bit later in case you're not a morning person like me. But think of these as short-term sacrifices. The more you do these sacrifices, the less time you have to dedicate towards these sacrifices. Everyone is a little different, so pick a schedule that works best for you and you only. The real important thing here is consistency. That's what develops a habit, and that is what we're going for. And habit number two, practice. The most fun one. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with learning, but after you learn, you're going to need to practice. The term use it or lose it is very real here. I remember when I first learned SQL and then I moved over to a BI tool course, like Tableau, and before you knew it, I don't know how to do SQL anymore. So make sure once you learn a skill or a tool that you continually use it as you're learning something new. Now, if that happens to you, you might need to go back to that course to take a little refresher, but you could probably skim through the stuff you really know. What I made a habit was to practice SQL on my lunch breaks. Now, it's not really easy to do on a phone. I didn't bring my laptop, so I just did SQL on a phone, which you can, you know, kind of guess how that goes, but I still put in the work. And that's about all I could do on my lunch breaks, but it was still something. And what that did was create a habit that I'm always thinking about SQL, even though if I go home and I'm learning Tableau or Power BI or something like that, I'm still getting those reps in for SQL so I don't lose any of that knowledge. But if you're like most people, you wanna relax on your lunch, you can do this in turn while you learn something. So. Maybe one day you practice, one day you learn, one day you practice, one day you learn, you get the idea. And yet again, consistency being the main thing here. All right, number three, time management, something I'm not great at. So this habit works with all the other habits. Without proper time management, you can lose days, weeks, even months if you're just, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. And then before you know it, a week's gone by and you haven't made any progress. Now, if that happens, you're going to have to backtrack in your course or your learning and relearn what you thought you knew, but you lost it because you didn't get that practice in. Now, you don't need to overcomplicate this area. You can simply make a to-do list without having to download an app or anything or separate tool or anything like that. And what you're going to want to put on that to-do list is just prioritize what exactly you need to do the next day. So that way you don't have to think about it. You could just do it. And it could be as granular as do 15 minutes of a course, do 30 minutes of practice, maybe update your resume, something like that but make this a habit to do every night so the next day you can just do that list and knock it out. And there's a little bit of satisfaction that goes with that too because you, you're knocking something off a checklist. And the thought process here is the thinking is done for us so we know exactly what to do the next day so there's less chance to not do what we need to do. Now before we talk about the next habit, maybe you're struggling on creating these new habits or getting rid of bad habits. Do yourself a favor and much like the courses you take or the tools you learn, a habit is something you need to learn and learn how to create those habits and get rid of the bad ones. Now to do this, I recommend reading the book Atomic Habits. This book changed how I looked at habits and it really taught me how to create new ones, whether it be habit stacking, which is kind of building off of your already existing habits but it's also shown me how to get rid of the bad ones I have so I can have more room for good ones. And of course, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. 
Now enough of that, let's get to habit number four. Habit number four, interviewing. This is what I call going the extra mile. I have yet to meet someone who did what I did to this extent. First, you need to learn the STAR method. Now that's situation, task, action, result. This is how you form your answers for behavioral questions. Now, that sounds more difficult than it actually is. We're actually gonna use ChatGPT to help us out here. Now you're gonna ask ChatGPT to give you 10 data-related behavioral questions and answers so you can fill in your experiences in those answers. But this will give you a framework of what to, to write down. Now, once you did that, here comes the hard part that no one else has done. Oh, at least not that I've met. Physically write down each question and answer on a piece of paper. Now, there's science behind this. Whenever you write something down, you retain it better. And once you write those down, you're gonna to want to make it a habit to practice these, not really practice, but go over these answers and questions every single day till you kind of memorize them. And what this is doing is gonna help form how you think of how you answer certain questions that get thrown at you. So to really make this work, you wanna pick questions that you know for a fact you have no idea how to answer because this will help you not stumble on any question that's thrown your way, which was a huge part during my first interviews is where my brain just turns off and I have no idea what I'm rambling on about. But the overarching theme here, consistency. Make sure you read these answers every single day so you can help yourself during that interview round. Now, number five, the most important habit of them all, and that's networking. I probably said this a million times on LinkedIn and in my previous videos, but it really is the most important. Make it a habit to network. Networking is the slowest out of all the things you can do. You make a connection one day, maybe to the next, and nothing comes from them for weeks or even months. But if you start now, early in your journey, this networking builds up over time and you'll have opportunities knocking at your door instead of you searching for them. This not only works for your first data position, but it will work for your second, third, fourth, and beyond. Now, this is the habit I truly believe is the most important. Why? Because it's how I landed my last two data positions, and it's how I'm gonna land my next one, and the one after that. It's really the kind of the easiest, but even though it takes long, it's still pretty easy to send a connection and maybe send a custom note on LinkedIn. But to put it in perspective, when I first started applying for data positions, I had to do over 100 applications. Now my second position, I did under 20. In my third data position, I did around 10 to 15 applications. But you can see the big difference there. Now these were definitely more quality over quantity types of applications, so I would reach out to the person looking to hire a certain position and you know, kind of let them know that I'm interested, try to get on a call with them. And if I did, there's a good chance I'd be moving on to the next round. So how do we make this a habit? So what you're gonna wanna do is throughout the day, connect with different people, search for who's hiring on LinkedIn and comment on their posts maybe even send them a custom message with your connection request. But this is how you network in the digital space. Now, a couple other things you can do is try to look up their email, which might be on their LinkedIn profile. It might be on the company website. It depends on who they are exactly, but maybe even a quick Google search. Now you're gonna to wanna to do this throughout the day and every day because you never know who's hiring and when they're gonna post or when they're gonna be looking to have someone on their team, and then you wanna be the first person to reach out to them, that's why you need to make it a habit. Whatever it is, if it's in the morning, at night, whatever, just do it consistently so you are one of the very few people or very first people that reaches out to these hiring managers, and that's more chances you have to land in your first interview. Now, doing this over time will have a huge impact on how quickly you come across an opportunity. Now, none of this matters if you're not consistent with it. That's really how you create and develop a habit 
So definitely check out that book, Atomic Habits, link below. Now, if there's any other habits that you have, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. Maybe I can make another video about it. But until then, I'll see you around.